Is taking L-carnitine going to give you some benefit when it comes to fat loss? If you ask one group of people, they're going to say, yes, it absolutely does. If you ask another group of people, they're going to say, no, we create carnitine in our body, so unless we're deficient, what's the point in taking it? Well, let's go ahead and break that down because there are mixed opinions, but if we understand how powerful and important carnitine is in terms of fat burning and that whole process in the body, it might shed some different light. So let's break it down. I put a link down below for seed. If you're focused on gut health, then you've probably considered taking a probiotic. That is a 25% off link for the probiotic that I recommend. They are a sponsor on this channel, but they're also the only probiotic that I would honestly stand behind just because they conduct the research, they know what they're doing, they fund a lot of research, the technology is very cutting edge. It has a capsule inside of a capsule. You've probably seen me talk about them a lot on my channel. So if you're focused on your gut, if you're focused on fiber, it's probably something that you should consider. Now's a good time because that link saves you 25% off. So 25% off your daily symbiotic from Seed. You can help support a company that's funding a lot of research, working on the gut brain axis, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Anyhow, that link down below, top line of the description. Let's open up with this study that was published in the journal Obesity Review. So we took a look at nine randomized control trials. So lots of participants, lots of different studies. In this case, it took a look at a total of 911 people. So these are the kind of studies we want to look for. Big, large, massive cohort studies. And within these studies, they found all kinds of different people. Overweight people, lean people, people with mental disorders, people with all kind, literally all kinds of different walks of life. Okay, And this study demonstrated that all but one of these studies demonstrated that carnitine was beneficial for fat loss, all the way down to the average being 1.33 kilograms of fat lost. So definitely pretty powerful when you look at this meta-analysis. But the big question is, like, okay, if carnitine is something that is only gonna give us a benefit if we're deficient, then why were so many people having success with it? Well, the bottom line is that we might be more deficient in it than we think. In order to produce carnitine, you need to have lysine and methionine. There's always a chance that someone could be deficient in lysine and methionine. That's one. Then you have sort of the cofactors that are involved in that process, which are going to be like vitamin C and iron. There's always a chance that people are deficient there. But one thing that's overlooked is that when you exercise a lot at a high intensity, and a lot of people that are interested in carnitine are exercising, if you exercise at 75% of your VO2 max, it's not hard to deplete up to 80% of your carnitine stores. Okay, and we know how important carnitine is. So let's talk real quick about what carnitine does just so it really drives it home. Okay, if a fatty acid is liberated out of the adipocyte, okay, lipolysis occurs, the fatty acids are now in the bloodstream. That fatty acid travels to a cell and it goes to the cytoplasm, which is like the liquidy area of a cell. Once it's in the cell, it turns into something called fatty acyl coenzyme A, fatty acyl coenzyme A. Okay, then this fatty acyl coenzyme A reacts with something called carnitine, operative word carnitine, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1. When it interacts with CPT1, it changes form, okay? And it changes into something called fatty acyl carnitine and coenzyme A. Okay, so fatty acyl carnitine can then cross across the mitochondrial membrane into the mitochondria where it can get burned as fuel. Then it goes through some processes with CPT2 and all this and that. Different story, we can really talk about that another day. But to save time, carnitine is so critical for the fat to get into the mitochondria. So if you're deficient in carnitine, you're gonna likely be deficient in CPT1 because most of your carnitine stores go to CPT1. Without CPT1, fatty acids can't get across the mitochondrial membrane and cannot be oxidized you cannot oxidize that fat for fuel without carnitine. So it's one of those supplements that's so inexpensive that it might be worth throwing into the mix because maybe it does help you. So when you look at this whole argument that occurs saying carnitine doesn't do anything, yes, carnitine does, I think it's highly, highly subjective for one, but it's also highly individual because you don't know someone's metabolism, you don't necessarily know someone's activity level, okay? You've got, you know, Bob who really pushes his workouts really, really hard, and then you've got, you know, Bill who goes and just lifts some weights but naturally has good genetics and builds some muscle. Maybe he doesn't have a benefit from carnitine, but maybe Bob does. It's one of those things that it is worth exploring, and when you look at the data, it does play a big role. It's also so, so, so important in so many fatty acid oxidation pathways I don't know if it's something that's worth not trying out occasionally. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.